are found in normal, but in pretrial, just to make sure that discovery is communicated to me, which I'm sure it will be, and we have an opportunity to go through it. Right, and we'll, we'll give you the normal dates right now. Those can be rescheduled uh, once you sort of get an idea of what uh, information you have to exchange. Obviously, there's a fair amount of information in this situation, so. Um, uh, and, and for Mr. Martinez's information, um, my office is able to reschedule pretrial conferences, so we can continue on a later date. Excellent, thank you. Anything else uh, from the state? Um, not at this time, although it's my understanding that Jim Key does want to address bond, and I don't object to him addressing bond. And I mean, I do object to lowering it, but yeah. I'll have an argument later. And have um, have you um, notified uh, the victims of that <coughs> issue being raised today? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Martinez. Your Honor, I, I want to ensure that the court saw my written bond motion that was filed. I think it was accepted yesterday morning. I see it. Hang on one moment. Thank you, Your Honor. I have had an opportunity to review the, the motion. Right? Thank you, Your Honor. I won't repeat much of what is in there other than to emphasize a couple of points. The purpose of bond is to ensure appearance in court. Uh, to my knowledge, Mr. Hickey has never missed court, and as noted in the bond and uncontested by the state, Mr. Hickey turned himself in voluntarily in this case without incident. Uh, I would contrast that with uh, Mr. Greengrass, who has been charged in connection with the same incident, who is currently absconded on bond. Uh, the state some often makes the argument that one indication of consciousness of guilt is uh, absconding or not appearing in court. Um, if that is true, then I think there is some inf uh, inferences to be drawn with respect to Mr. Greengrass and some positive inferences to be drawn with respect to Mr. Hickey. Um, I believe that the facts, even as articulated in the criminal complaint, suggest the existence of a strong affirmative defense in this case, of, of course being self-defense. The facts, even as articulated in the criminal complaint, are that Mr. Hickey was attacked by two armed gunmen, that he was hit in the head by one of those gunmen. Uh, Mr. Hickey has a scar behind his ear uh, as, a res as a result of that attack. That um, one or both of those assailants pointed their guns at Mr. Hickey, uh, potentially even pulled the trigger, and that Mr. Hickey, only after that uh, happened, pulled his own firearm out and defended himself. Um, Your Honor, I would note that Mr. Greengrass has been charged with the attempted first-degree intentional homicide of Mr. Hickey, as well as the felony murder of the victim in this case, uh, with the underlying felony being aggravated battery. In other words, the state, by its own pleadings, indicates that Mr. Hickey was uh, put in a situation that put him in substantial risk of great bodily harm. Um, I think that the self-defense case here is strong, and I think that Mr. Hickey, because of that, has every incentive to return to court. Um, in addition, as I pointed out, um, he has voluntarily submitted himself to the authority of the court, knowing that he was likely to face extremely serious charges and knowing that he was likely to be taken into custody. Um, as I point out in the motion, Mr. Hickey has been a lifelong or nearly lifelong resident of Wisconsin and the La Crosse area specifically. His family, uh, immediate and extended, are almost entirely in the La Crosse area. He has no significant resources with which to flee, uh, no significant resources with which to um, uh, undergo or defend himself from the manhunts that would absolutely ensue should he flee, um, and is unable at this time to post the $50,000 cash bond that is impo that has been imposed. I'm not asking for a signature bond. I agree that a cash bond is appropriate. I would ask that the court reduce the cash to $10,000. 
$1,000, which is still a significant amount of money for Ms. Pickey and his family. And of course, we have no objection to house arrest and GPS monitoring, which strengthen the inference that Mr. Hickey would report back to jail. I want to emphasize, Your Honor, I understand the seriousness of the charges in this case, and I understand the state's argument in this kind of case is generally that someone facing a very serious charge has a very serious incentive to flee. Two things on that point, Your Honor. First, I have never been presented with evidence that actually suggests or that actually supports that inference. I understand it makes intuitive sense. Our intuitions are often wrong. Second, the facts and circumstances of this particular case strongly cut against that inference, and I would ask the court to reject that inference in the absence of evidence that supports it. So I do think a lower tax bond would be appropriate. Thank you. Attorney Stemp. Your Honor, Judge Bierke set the bond at $50,000 knowing that Mr. Hickey had turned himself in, knowing the facts that were in the criminal complaint. In fact, knowing a lot of the other facts, because I think he mentioned during the bond argument that he had been reviewing a lot of the affidavits, search warrants, applications for search warrants during the time of this investigation. I think, you know, obviously the parties are going to disagree on self-defense, and I would ask, this is not the time to argue that one way or the other, honestly, but if you take a very narrow view of when self-defense applies, you know, perhaps. We do have evidence that I would argue shows that he's not even going to be entitled to that instruction at trial. We were prepared today at a preliminary hearing to present evidence. Two witnesses have come forward, and I did provide that information to Mr. Martinez today, but we were prepared to let the court know that there was, Mr. Hickey was engaging in an argument with this other group, neither one of whom, by the way, was the decedent and Mr. Greengrass, and invited them over to fight. These two witnesses both were at the party with him, saw that he was engaging in this argument, saw that he was agitated, and also stated that they asked him, well, what are you going to do when they come, or words to that effect, and he didn't answer, but he pulled out a gun and displayed it, physically answering that question. He placed himself in what really is a mutual fight. All right. You just told me that you're not going to be allowed to do self-defense, and yet the state is arguing the facts right now. Well, there are, but some of these facts, because, you know, I'm not really arguing one way or the other, but I just want the court to know, because those facts about him, and we're not denying that he was struck on the head or anything of that nature, but this is much more of a mutual combat situation. You don't get to just kill somebody and then, and when you're willingly participating in a fight, and then walk away and say, oh, I was defending myself. Again, the issue before the court is reasonable and has to be set for an individual with a fear of them fleeing. Yes, and so on those other factors, Your Honor, and 939.01 sub 4 lists those considerations. Strength of the state's case is one consideration, so self-defense does go to that one way or the other. The seriousness of the charge. I don't have to present evidence. The statute itself does give the court the opportunity to infer that the seriousness of the charge creates a risk of fleeing. There are a number of other of those factors. He did turn himself in. He did turn himself in. He did not comply with the court's order. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, counsel. The case will be submitted.